I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Dad said you used to be good. I woke up one day and I wasn't 25 anymore. And it pissed me off. Hey, this is Matt once again. To another video. And this is a request, a paid request, this time from Dan. And thank you for that. Everyone, anyone who's ever interested in requesting, send in a paid request. You can do it either via my PayPal or Patreon, joining that. Both links are down below in the info box. It could be a review, topic, news, reaction, pretty much any type of video. Just please feel free to send it in either of the links down below. But this is for a TV movie called Widow's Kiss that I believe was for HBO. I could be wrong on that. It came out in 1996, give or take. And with Widow's Kiss, on the one hand... I would say it's an average film because the plot is nothing you haven't seen before. Production quality is a TV movie. There's not fights, action, explosion. But there's not a lot of that stuff. I would say the, the thing that kept me interested was the cast. And overall, that's why I don't mind the film because of the cast. Now, the cast that I'm talking to pertains to Beverly D'Angelo, who was Miss Griswold in the National Lampoon Vacation movies, opposite Chevy Chase. She plays a seductress, and she marries this lawyer played by Bruce Davison. Bruce Davison was the original Willard back in the 70s. He was also the senator in the first couple X-Men movies that wanted to go against the, the mutants. And he's been in other stuff as well. He falls for Beverly D'Angelo fairly quickly. They get married. Soon after, Bruce Davison dies. And now it's up to his son, played by Mackenzie Aston. And that was definitely interesting to me because, well, number one, he's the brother of Sean Aston, the guy who's the lead in The Goonies. Uh, this underrated film from the 90s called Toy Soldiers. He was in the Lord of the Rings films. So yeah, that that guy is Sean Astin. His brother is the lead here, Mackenzie Astin. There's one other film I've seen Mackenzie Astin in. That's the Darvish Pill Kids movie. And, Grant, if you look on IMDb, you'd know, but I had not. So I did not know he made any other movies. I thought the Darvish Pill Kids was the only movie he's been in. And, of course, he's much older. So I was like, wow, I get to see Mackenzie Aston get another shot at acting. Because the Garfield kids, he did the best he could for what he was given. And this is a better movie than that. And it was cool to see, again, him get a bit more to do. A bit of a more serious role. Look into the death of his dad. 
Beverly D'Angelo, knowing there's something wrong with her. At times she tries to seduce him as well. And Matias and Aston hires a private investigator who used to know his dad. Now that guy's played by Dennis Haysbert. Now you may remember him from the commercials trying to sell you insurance. Allstate. But I remember him more for Major League. The guy with the voodoo. Fuck you. I do it myself. <laughs> At the end of Major League. I just. <clears throat> I like Dennis Haysbert. And I think he's the best part of the movie. And part of me wishes the movie was from his point of view. Although I did like McKenzie Aston. I, I like Dennis Haysbert. And he's in it sporadically throughout. It's not a cameo or anything. And. He has a decent part in this movie. And one of the reasons I liked him, not only because I liked him as an actor, but he had some good lines. For example, uh, Mackenzie's asking him. Let me get the line right. Like, why are you so angry? How come you get so mad? I woke up one day and I wasn't 25 anymore. And it pissed me off. <laughs> I, I, for some reason I like that line. Or. Uh, there's a, a line earlier where. Mackenzie's asking him. About stuff. And he's like I don't chat. Especially at 10 in the morning. Or. He's talking to someone. And she's like you hold on to me. Hey I kicked ass. <laughs> so Dennis Haysbert was. Was a nice presence to have in the film. Some nice levity to his performance. And like I said, I wish more of the film was about him. Because he was easily the most interesting character in the flick. Now, going a little bit back into the movie. The score, I didn't really care for the jazz score. The beginning of the film, there are times where it, feel, it sounds as if, if you think of jazz music farting, that's kind of what the opening music at times sounded like. So I, I wasn't really big on the, the score of the movie. Uh, and like I said, the movie itself is fairly average. Like Bruce Davison, he seems to fall in love with Beverly D'Angelo very quickly because we only see him with her twice. The first time they meet, and then they have dinner and sex. Then the next time we see him, gets married. I thought, okay, this seems rushing it a bit. Especially when it gets to a point where Mackenzie comes out of the shower, she's there, and then Bruce Davison says, She says you exposed yourself. I'm like, you're not going to believe your son, but you believe this woman that we've only seen you be with twice before you got married? So some of the stuff is like, uh, I don't know if that really works the best on a script level. But Matizzi Aston, yeah, I didn't mind his performance. Uh, I don't think he's as good as his brother, Sean. Which is funny because his character's name here is Sean. But uh, I thought he was fairly capable in the role. He's also trying to get back together with his ex-girlfriend, and there's a sex scene, and uh, you get to see the Tarsh Pale Kid's ass, which is a lot I never thought I'd fucking say in my life. Hey, I got to see the Tarsh Pale Kid's ass. But you do. But I said that when you watch the movie... If you're not interested in the cast, I don't know how much you'll get into this. Because Beverly D'Angelo is interesting to see her play a bit more of a villainous role, a little bit more of a seductress role. Because I mainly remember her for the sweet wife and, and mother and vacation films. So it's nice to see her stretch her acting. Like I said, Dennis Haysbert, he's f fun in the role. Matizzi Aston is a good it's an interesting curiosity for me. It's like, from Garsh Pelkis to this. Okay. 
yeah, he's actually not that bad. I've seen so much worse actors. I got so many more opportunities. And it's a little bit of an investigation movie. Mackenzie and his buddy are getting pulled into this front initiation. And there's a point where he almost gets drowned. Like I said, it's a movie that could have used a lot more excitement in terms of the script. Meaning, it feels like a TV movie. It feels, I don't want to say cheap, but... You're not going to get fights. You're not going to get shootouts. You're not going to get explosions. You're not really going to get... This seems like if you cut... A, if you cut some of the, the scenes... Like when Beverly D'Angelo has a son... But it's not a son. It's just her partner in crime that she said was her son. And because he sees them sexing it up a bit. If you cut a few scenes like that out... This could be a 40 five minute episode of a TV show like if it was Birdie She Wrote or Columbo or something like, I mean it's that, that kind of thing that's what I mean it just there's nothing that big grand or memorable that you don't really stick with you so like I said uh, the cast is the main reason why it held a lot of interest for me. And you know, the ending It's pretty meh that feeling. To spoil alert, spoilers. This is for Dan. I mean the least I can do go a little bit of spoilers. Like I said, Mackenzie and his buddy get into this fried initiation where they're supposed to drop off this bridge to the water. When he gets in there, he almost gets drowned, which is pretty decent. It's the actual actors underwater. They get out, they roll around. Mackenzie <coughs> shoots the guy in self-defense. <coughs> then Haysbert arrives. Mackenzie tells him, hey, there's something more going on. Bruce McKenzie walks up to Beverly D'Angelo and says, I know what's going on. Your son is dead. Throws her something. Then almost immediately she says, hey, we can work together. And pretty much almost immediately gives herself up. And of course he's wearing some kind of wire thing. Or at least Des Haysbert hears it. Has a gun on her. She mentions something about it was set up. And he's like, who set it up? And then Mackenzie realizes what's going on and goes to see his grandma, who we've seen throughout the flick, who was not a fan of the dad character. <clears throat> because at the beginning of the film, her daughter, Mackenzie's mom, had passed away and the grandma blamed the dad. And Mackenzie throws her the gun. He's like, come on, grandma. You want to finish it? Finish it. Primus tells her, hey, uh, Primus tells her to fuck off. He doesn't say it that way, but that's pretty much what he does. He walks out, and there's a nice moment where him and Dennis Haysbert, Haysbert asks, oh, how are you doing? I'll handle it. And Dennis Haysbert's like, no, kid, we can handle it. So it's nice, you know, it's like Dennis Haysbert telling him, hey, you're not alone. But as I explain that, it is kind of it is something you would just see on an episode of a TV show. Nothing like movie quality wise for a finale. But I say it had to have like the the whole house explodes and someone jumps off the second floor. But it just like I said, I could, I could understand why I had never heard of this film before, and I, that's why I keep repeating. Unless you're really interested in the cast, which is what kept me, at least on a time waster level, to see how these actors did the job, and they did it fairly well. I, there's really not a whole lot to talk about, movie-wise. Not mystery, because you know, 
who most of the culprits are. Not too much of an entertainment level because there's not much action or thrills really to get out of this. So it just, at the end of the day, it was okay. It was alright. I like Bevan D'Angelo. I like Dennis Haysbert. Dennis Haysbert, I wish more of the film was about him. Mackenzie Aston. It was like to see him get another shot at the Darvish Pill Kids. And it shows it in. He might not be his brother Sean Aston, but he's not that bad either. He's actually decent. He's actually pretty decent. Better than some of the actors I see in fucking today's age. But if you had a thriller... <clears throat> like, there's this movie called Run with Patrick Dempsey. That's a bit of action thriller. Like, something exciting like that. I think that would have been nice to see. But that's not what kind of film this was supposed to be in the first place. I, I did it. Also, I thought there would be a lot more of Beverly D'Angelo trying to seduce Mackenzie Aston. I thought it'd be sort of this cab mouse seduction wise. Not really. There's not a whole lot of that. Mainly when he gets out of the shower and she sees him and then the dad gets pissed. A nightmare that he has of her. Maybe. And then that one other time at the very end, maybe more, but uh, I mean, with the the title, with the cover of the VHS, you you think it'd be a lot more about that. It's really not, which I'm kind of surprised. Which maybe that would have been nice to see, just to get more Beverly D'Angelo, more of that Black Widow seductress type of evil character. A little bit bored for her to sink her teeth into. So I do think there's more that could have been done. But I said, at least. You know it wasn't a total waste of time for me. So with that said. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.